Hi, this is Michael, VK5ZEA, from Port Lincoln in South Australia, and I'm back up at the VK5 REX repeater site, and I've been doing some experiments this afternoon, and I thought I'd show you what I've been up to. Okay, what we've got is a standalone GMSK D-Star compatible repeater. I built this up uh, earlier this year. Uh, I've got a couple of radios here, both uh, Sumoko SRM9000 radios. A receiver on this side, a transmitter over there. In the middle you can see a Satoshi DB node adapter board. And this has been operating as an experimental uh, D-Star compatible repeater for quite some time. I've had it on the air a few times, but generally it sits connected to uh, dummy loads as it is now. And just for, to allow me to have some experiments. And, but uh, some of you may notice there's this, that doesn't look quite, uh, quite normal. And what does this circuit board do, Michael? Well. What I've built up here is a, a small interface which allows me to connect the, the modem, the, the GMSK modem chip on the DB node adapter through this cable up to an ICOM IDRP2C controller. So what we have in effect is an ICOM compatible RF solution that uh, will plug into an ICOM D-Star gateway controller and it's working quite well. I've got this plugged into the C port of the IDRP2C and uh, this comes up as VK5 REXC, a 2 meter repeater and um, I've got this connected up to Reflector 1C at the moment and um, this is indicating that we've got some sort of transmitting activity so I'll turn up the volume on the IC9180 I've got here. Oh, oh and indeed we can. <laughs> oh, we got some oh, got a, a conversation. Let's bring up the call sign to see yeah, who's talking. I think it's uh, M0 AQC oh, Alan. And, and uh, uh, so that's. I think we were listening to you about, um, that's this uh, RF hardware transmitting. Um, it works quite well on this uh, on this board is a 74AC541 line driver buffer and that is the same integrated circuit you would find inside the radios inside the ICOM repeater hardware on both the receiver and transmit radios this is what they use to interface to the RP2C so I thought I'd replicate what they do I spent a bit of time scouring through the service manuals for the ICOM hardware to see exactly how they do it and uh, replicated that here and uh, the way we've got it connected into the DB node adapter, I built up a, uh, a little 28 pin header IC socket arrangement here that allows me to keep the firmware plugged in but intercept the lines going to and from the GMSK modem chip. And it's important to have the firmware plugged in. The firmware controls the receive function of the GMSK modem chip. Those things just don't run themselves, so you've got to have some help locking onto acquiring the received GMSK signal. So that's all the firmware does. Um, it provides no connectivity to the outside world. This uh, USB cable here, that just provides power to the circuit. Um, so all input and output comes via that little umbilical cable and via the interface board. And um, it's working quite well. One of the things I really wanted to prove was that D-Star is not an ICOM only solution. A lot of people think that it's um, it's uh, an ICOM developed product. Well, ICOM had a fair bit to do with it, but it's not ICOM only. Um, and this just goes to show that you can build hardware, which is DSAR compatible, and um, there you go. And it's working quite well. We've uh, we're still going here, I think. Yep, there we go. Look at that. And uh, it's not on air as such. I'm only using it for experiments. Um, try not to don't link up to VK5 REXC because uh, when I leave here this is coming with me it's not going to be here permanently it's just here for a bit of an experiment and uh, but certainly if you have any questions please don't hesitate to give me an email or give me a call on the radio if you hear me uh, have a bit of a talk I usually uh, pop up uh, from time to time um, of course we have to take into account the time differences when you may be up is when I might be asleep but uh, that's ham radio for you um, but I just really wanted to show that uh, this sort of homebrew solution is uh, quite viable, that it does work. And um, it's not too, not too complex. I think it's about $10 or $15 worth of parts. 
on the, the little Vera board uh, circuit board I've built up. Very, very uh, prototypey, as they would say. Um, I just wanted to get something out of my head and into physical form, and that was the quickest way um, that I was able to do that. And, uh, it just wanted to prove this concept works, and um, it's working quite well. I had it uh, built up a couple of weeks ago. I was up here and had it hooked up, and had a, a couple of QSOs uh, on Reflector 1C, and uh, it works quite well. But uh, I thought I'd come back with a video camera and just show you what I've been up to. And uh, certainly, please, let me know if, you're, if you want to know any more about this. Uh, I'd be certainly quite happy to discuss it and uh, help anyone out there who wants to uh, replicate what I've done here. So 73s for now, and uh, we'll catch you again soon. This is VK5ZEA, Michael in Port Lincoln, South Australia, and we're signing off.